Okay, I'm going to suspend this uh, rotor, 28 magnets on each side, 56 total. I have two one inch wide, half inch hole in the middle, quarter inch thick, and I stack two of them at the end of this one inch thick wood dowel is the axle, and I have them on both ends. So, what I'm going to do is this, this is one end. I've got five of these. I kind of like the, the five because it's, this one points and there's two, and this one points and there's two, this one points and there's two two so there's kind of sets of three anyways I have five of these and inside I have two more like this and these are going to hold it fore and aft usually if you look at Mendocino motors or motors that have the rotors suspended in the air with magnetic bearings they have one end is like a pinpoint and it, the force of everything goes to one end and then the other end is suspended in the air anyways but I want to have this fully suspended in the air on both sides so what I did here is I have a wood plate with two magnets in it and I have it centered in here and so that's going to be that's going to be shoving this that way. Now, where I got the distances distances from, like what's going to be the air gap? It's like you take two magnets here. That's attractive. I want it repulsive. Whoops. Ah, well, that was repulsive the first time. Okay, so you just get them there. And push them together. And you can't really get them to touch. These are N52s. I'll try to make it so you can see it. So... Like that's a pretty good air gap right there. It's a little bit less than a quarter inch. Right about there. So, and, and if I have both this end and the other end being pushed, it should center it and pushed equally. It should have it uh, suspended in the air, and the fore and the aft will have magnets repulsive on both ends, keeping it in the air, fore and aft uh, pressure, I guess you'd call it. And then these five magnets are going to keep the magnets here in the air okay so that's the idea this is very pretty interesting here okay we got a round magnet here and this is for example one of those five now I've done this already and Hold on a sec, I need to reposition myself. Okay, I'm back. So, anyways, 
So I have this. This is going to be one of the five on the other uh, end plate. And uh, I marked how it needs to go. See, I put a little piece of tape there. That's going to be facing in. And then this piece of tape means it needs to be up. So I'll have one like this, one like this, one like this, one like this. So when I put it in, to make sure this is going to be repulsive against this. Now I got this end. I put a piece of tape on it. And so this is like the masking tape side, I call it. So whatever you... So, now this is interesting. This is what I want to show here. Now, right there centered. That's how you want it to be. If you... If you go too far to my left... It goes like that. It becomes attractive, and, and it doesn't suspend in the air. And if you go the other way, same thing. See that? So you have to have it right in the middle here. And now I'm getting the air gap. And the air gap, again, I'm shooting for is a little bit less than a quarter inch. So, let's say it's a quarter inch air gap here, air gap here. So, the inside diameter of the five magnets, you know, if you were to draw a circle here, would be about one and a half inches because it's quarter inch air gap, but actually a little less than that. So, I drilled a hole out one and a half inches in, into the plywood, and I over I went past the rim of the hole just a little bit and so that's my air gap and what I wanted to show you okay so you got to have this thing right in the middle of this and you can't have it too long or too short so you got to have those five magnets rimming this these two magnets right in the middle now watch I'm going to spin this to there now see and it's now it becomes attractive and it's also not good if you go okay there's whoops god okay so here's the face that it needs to be it needs to be like this it needs to be like this Hoping you all see this. It needs to be like this. This face, I put tape on it. This face facing, okay? If I rotate just once like this, it's no good. If I go all the way over, it's really attractive. If I go again, it's no good. It's no good. It's kind of half attractive, half but if I go back to how it's supposed to be now, we get the nice repulsive to be able to suspend it in air. Now here's the uh, interesting thing I wanted to show. We got a round magnet here. So now if it was a square magnet, everything would be different, but it's round and, and you would think that this magnet would have a north here and a south here. Like when they cut the magnet out, maybe there would be a north and a south and a south and a north or something. Uh, Bearden calls these a dipole, electromagnetic or permanent magnet. Fields are called a dipole because it's a, like a, a pair of, like a dice has six sides so you can see there's six there's the this end and the reverse end there's two and then of course there's 
the one side that's going to work and the other three sides. So it's a total of six. And so you have to select with a permanent magnet the at least a rectangular. What, what I'm getting at is with a rectangular permanent magnet, there's only going to be one side, one way to do it. But look at this. When I rotate this, now some of you might go, oh, well, that's obvious, but it's just interesting to me is when you rotate with a round disc magnet, it's, ah, shoot. I'll try to do it better here. It's the same. All the way around is the same. It's not like a square magnet where there's a north and a south. It's all the same. It's all, let's say this is south all the way around. It's south all the way around. God. And like I said, if this was a square magnet, it would be like north and south and north and south, you know, four sides to the this side. So I think that is interesting. And a mystery is when you pass a disc shaped magnet past a coil with a core in it, you will see the front, the front edge as it goes will create like, uh, for instance, a north sine wave uh, peak and the back end as it goes past will create a south uh, sine wave peak you know when when this goes past a coil with a core in it or without a core in it it'll like whoosh it'll give it a, a whoosh positive and then there'll be a little on the back end there'll be a, a, a negative but that doesn't make sense, right? Because it's all south. So I guess it's the direction of the, uh, the movement, the direction of the magnet gives you the, as it's, as it's coming up to it, leading, it creates, let's say a north. And then when it's trailing, it creates a south. So, there's that mystery, because it's the same all the way around. If this was square, of course, this would be a north and this would be a south. If this was a square magnet and it swept past a coil, my finger's the coil, of course you'd have like a north here and a south here, okay? But it's because it's a round ring magnet or a disc magnet doesn't do that because it's proven by taking this magnet holding it here and spinning it and it's the same all the way around so I don't know I think that's interesting maybe some sort of secret mystery to the molar generators with the round hockey puck magnets and the Romero UK uh, looper speeding it up when it's loaded so anyways um, there's what I'm doing so I'm going to now glue the magnets on the other stator end and putting this together is going to be difficult that's going to be the difficult part I can say how it works and everything but just as example I have these two magnets here oh these are just getting it in there Let's 
see that it pulls to that. So I hope these air gaps are going to be correct. They seem like they will be, but when I get it all together, I might need to readjust all the air gaps. Looks to me... Here's the way it goes. Oh boy, I don't know. I might have this one opposite how it's supposed to be. Anyways, working on it. Okay, uh, thanks for watching.